my name is Elizabeth Waipera Morito. And yes, I consider it a privilege to stand here before you. I am not actually so old to this church. I joined here last year. And, um, but the grace of God has been sufficient. And so there is no way I would not have something to tell you even as I stand before you this morning. And so I would request that we pray even as we begin to share the word that he may be amongst us today. Father, we bow before thy presence this morning. We give you honor, we give you glory, Jehovah Father, and we invite you, Jehovah God, that you may reign. Jehovah Father, may you speak through me, O God. May you minister to me even as I minister unto them. And Jehovah Father, we shall not forget to honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can have your seats. such an honor to know that uh, we are actually in the spirit as I sat there and the song being sung here that we are being still because we know that he is God not because we have other many things that we can put before us and say this is what we have and is going to give us victory in our different endeavors but because he is God that is why we be still in every circumstance. And so I am going to speak to us a topic that he has continually taught me. And I want to speak about faith in adversity. Like, what does your faith become? What does your faith become when that real situation faces you and everything else cannot work at that point in time? That is not to imply that we should have a one to eight to nine doing it on ourselves and only involve God when it comes to the position 10. But what I am saying, as Pastor Francis was preaching to us the other day in Matthew 5 uh, in Matthew 5 around verse 3, that we need to be poor in spirit if the kingdom of heaven is going to belong to us. And so we ought to be helpless every step of the way. We ought to have that faith that people will never at any point in time confuse us for non-believers. Um, so I want to pose a big question to us. Okay, not in the light of this guy in Citizen. Saying, who loves saying the big question? Yes, but it should be a big question for you to always ask yourself. What comes to your mind every time you hear the scriptures? Um, Luke chapter 2 verse 37 that nothing is impossible with God. It does not say some things are possible and others are not, but it says nothing is impossible with God. Also, when we read from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 24, whatever we ask for in prayer, we believe without doubt. He surely is bound to give it to us. And what also comes to your mind every time you read John 16, verse 33, when Jesus was telling his disciples that they are going to face many troubles in this world, but they should know that he's actually in control. I don't know what comes to your mind, but for me, I have many instances where I have had to absolutely trust in God. And in many ways, I normally tell my friends that uh, for me, number one is faith in God everything else becomes sideshows. It doesn't matter if those around me, even if they were 99%, actually believe there is an alternative to their faith. But for me, God is absolute. So in the Bible, I'll, we will refer a lot to some of the stories in the Bible. And um, let us look, for instance, in the book of uh, Judges, Judges chapter 7, when you're given the story of Gideon. And um, God has many ways in which he sends us to the battlefield without any weapons. So that whenever we get that victory, we are actually able to ascribe it to him. And we will never at any point in time 
point out to something and say it is because I did this that I was able to succeed. So if you remember uh, Gideon being told, okay, we can just read verse 1. Mm. Okay. Then Jerubabel, that is Gideon, and all the people who are with him rose early and encamped beside the well of Harod, so that the camp of the Midianites was on the north side of them by the hill of Moreh in the valley. And the Lord said to Gideon, the people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, my own hand has saved me. Now therefore proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. And 22,000 of the people returned, and 10,000 remained. So at that point in time, ask yourself, will be you be in the 10,000 or in the 22,000? As we proceed to verse 4, But the Lord said to Gideon, The people are still too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. Then it will be that of whom I say to you, this one shall go with you, the same shall go with you. And of whomever I say to you, this one shall not go with you, the same shall not go. So he brought the people down to the water and the Lord said to Gideon, everyone who laps from the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set apart by himself. Likewise, likewise everyone who gets down on his knees to drink the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth was 300 men. All the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. Yes, and we can continue and continue. But you see from the big numbers, if you are to count 22,000 plus the 10,000, that is about 32,000. But God gives Gideon an instruction. Yes, I want the one who lapped the water on their hands as opposed to the one who bowed to drink the water those are the men that you're going to go with and he has already given him the instruction and told him lest the Midianites actually think lest you people actually think you won the battle over the Midianites because you are many and so it ceases to be about numbers it ceases to be about how many people ascribe to that faith absolutely but it ceases it, it then uh, narrows down to the point of you as an individual you may be alone in that situation but how much amount of faith do you actually absolutely believe that nothing is impossible with God so I pray that um, of course every time I read like from the book of John 14 26 uh, we are told that the Holy Spirit is going to remind us that word which we've already read. Because as I stand here, I'm thinking, if you've not even heard about Luke chapter 237, like what will you live on when that situation comes? And somebody's telling you some things are possible and others are not. So what I am charging us is we need to be in line with God's word so that we are not lost on the way. Let's Otherwise, we will be the ones telling them that we do not care, however many they may be. Also, you will notice that there are very many different characters who, in the Bible, had to, okay, or rather found peace, even in that situation when they actually had to believe and it seemed absolutely impossible. And it is not out of line with the word. If you read from uh, John 14, 27, it also tells us that peace I live with you. That is when Jesus was telling to his disciples, I live with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So he has already left us that peace. And he has been keen to let you know it is not the peace that the world will give you. So it will be about you and him at that point in time. And so you will relax whatever the situation. 
if um, maybe just to give you my personal testimony. I remember recently, actually, currently, where I work, and uh, as I applied for that job, and it was being a slightly supervisory role, most people are afraid to actually apply, and so we were not many. We were probably about 17, and um, they, they shortlisted about three people. And I didn't know the others, but later I came to learn that one of them who was shortlisted is actually somebody I have met before. And so coincidentally we meet and uh, we are having a conversation. And um, well, he's more, with regard to academic, uh, uh, academic level, he's higher than me, having a master's. I only have my undergraduate. And so he was telling me that it is good that you've been shortlisted interview. And I almost told him back. I almost started to have a conversation with him. But in my head, I was telling God, let him know that you're the God that actually reigns. Let him know that it is not about our academic levels or anything else. But as you sit in heaven, you control everything here on earth. And I remember when we went for the interview, we did and uh, a few days later, well, just before I give you the outcome, because I know that is what you're mostly waiting for, that period of waiting is not normally that easy. That period of actually having to trust absolutely in God is not normally easy. And so I, I would pray, I would pray. That is the time all the scriptures, well, of course, if you've been reading, they actually come to mind and you can remind God and you're being still Psalms 46 verse 10 telling him that he is absolute well the outcome was positive and I, I, I didn't even know how to start a conversation with him because um, uh, I had to be very gracious yes even as you tell him the results and everything. But all I could tell him was, I pray that even as you continue in the journey, that the Lord will give you the grace to absolutely trust in him. Because in many ways, he has a way of surprising us. Um, every time I read, okay, I've realized different categories of people will actually respond differently to situations. Um, if you read in Revelation chapter 3 verse 15 to 16 if you'd let us have that when God says I know your works that you're neither hot nor cold I could wish you were cold or hot so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot I will vomit vomit you out of my and so this is the great question. In which category are you? Are you cold? This is the category of people who do not at all really care about the matters of faith. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. That the message of the cross is actually foolishness to them. But to us who Christ has actually saved and taught us the things of the faith, it is the power of God unto salvation. And so, these people, they, I, I am not sure if I am more worried about these or the lukewarm people. But yes, at least just to get a rough idea of what the cold kind of class of people are. And I remember I used to have such a friend, well, an acquaintance. Now that I know I am a Christian and my close clique of friends should be believers. And we, are, we that was when I was still back in campus. And she, she, we were having a conversation about something that was not doing so well. And I told her, you need to have faith. We cannot see it, yes. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. That faith is the substance of things not seen but hoped for. We could not see it, but I was telling her, we need to have faith. Because at this point in time, 
uh, I cannot see any th- other kind of help. And that friend of mine was like, mm, faith only makes you happy. Like, it just makes you feel nice at the moment, but there is nothing really that I believe comes out of it. That was her words. And I was so angry because I was thinking, this is somebody I have known. I wish they could see the positive in having faith because there are those situations that really never make sense. I thank God because over the years she has changed because I keep disturbing her all the time. And at this point in time, like I am looking at uh, even like when I got this recent job that I am in, I was speaking to her and she was like, hmm, would you mind praying with me? There is a project I am actually undertaking and I have not seen a friend of mine who has had faith like you have. And I was telling God, hmm, I thank you because you are working in her to make her willing and able to know that there is no other God besides you. So in the other class of people, they are the hot, well, according to the Bible, class of people. These ones are the ones who believe absolutely. Like I have been telling you, we need to all be there, that nothing else matters. They have known the secret of Hebrews 1, 1, Hebrews 1, 6, that it is impossible for us to please God without that faith. Because seeing in our own human eyes, Hebrews 11, verse 6. In our own human eyes, things may not work out. But when we see in the eyes of the faith, we will continue living, not based on the circumstances, but based on the word of God. And so these are the kind of people who trust the process. I mean, everybody wants the product. As I gave my story, all of you wanted the end. But there is a process to it, as I was saying. And they understand that Romans 8, 18 is absolute. It is true. That we consider the sufferings of this present time. I consider the sufferings of this present time not worthy to be compared with the glory which is going to be revealed to us. And so we do not waver based on the situation at hand. Look at some of the characters in the Bible. Look at David. As he faced Goliath and uh, he's this big man. Being um, still young at that point in time, he does not have those weapons. And he tells him, I come to you in the name of the Lord not with any javelin or the, all those other things. So you can put whatever you've probably been trusting upon in that sentence. So not with the money I have, not with that academic excellence or level of education that I have, not with the kind of connections I have seen that, especially among the young people, that you absolutely believe Without connections, you cannot get opportunities. But I am here to stand and tell you, like in that opportunity, being in public service, which have become so corrupt these days, sorry to say, I didn't give even 10 shillings to be in it. And so when I hear people saying that I must have connections, I must have these, these, these uh, money to bribe. I was telling my youth network group the other time, that um, as long as um, they are sure of the opportunity I've interacted with someone who, who told me eh, akisema nita toa 100,000 and I am sure of that opportunity the word is sure they are going to give so that surety I don't know what is based what they base it on So look at also another person like um, Daniel chapter 3. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that time they are 
being told by King Nebuchadnezzar that they must bow before him. And what is their response? That they are not going to bow. They will not bow whatever the circumstance because they know their God is going to deliver them. And they do not stop there even if he does not. We are not going to bow either. I really wonder what would be our response for some of us who are sitting here. Upon the, uh, like I remember the story of the Al-Shabaab when they would come and ask you, tell us something in Islam and you have no idea. So I wonder as a Christian, would you start saying I am a pagan now that you don't know Islam? I mean, what would you do? Do you actually believe that that God, like you know, not because you can see it, but you are sure you have worked with him enough and he's going to deliver you. I am saying it's not an easy journey, but uh, it's worth every step of the way. Every step of the way. Uh, when we read from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8 to 10, as Paul tells, tells uh, his fellow believers about the adversities they have faced and how they should respond to it. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yet we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God who raises the dead. Other versions would say, I think it was NIV. In fact, we felt sure that we were going to die, but this made us stop trusting in ourselves and start trusting God who even raises the dead to life. We stopped trusting in ourselves. We have, we have something that we probably would have a reason to trust ourselves for. But we have known that being poor in spirit is being absolutely helpless. And God, when he sees that kind of a broken and contrite spirit, he honors it. And so, uh, we can only limit ourselves. This is what I'll tell you. Because if you read like in uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Imagine the spirit of him who actually raised Jesus Christ to life lives in us. And yet we continue living a life of defeat. A life of compromise. A life of not wanting to absolutely trust in God. Like what a joy to know that the spirit of the one who raised Christ to life actually lives also in us. For me, that's enough assurance. And also, every time I read from uh, Ephes I mean Isaiah chapter 43, and especially verse 4. Okay, well, when you read from verse 1, you're being told, when you go through the waters, since your pressure is in my sight, okay, just give me verse 1. Verse 1. But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name, by your name you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. The question is not if, the question is when. Remember, Jesus already warned us, as I said, that we will go through many troubles in this world. But now we are being reminded that when that time comes, because it is bound to come, you shall not be burned when you walk through fire. Verse 3, For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia, and Seba in your place. Since you are precious in my sight, you have been honored, and I have loved you. 
Therefore, I give men for you and people for your life. My, my contemporary English version says, I will give nations in exchange for you and lives in exchange for you. Like what a joy to know that he gives lives in exchange for us. I mean, what else would I be trusting? Anyway, I hope we are convicted enough. We are told the, the word of God should, Second Timothy chapter 6 verse 13, should correct us, rebuke us, train us, I hope we are being taught. And also, if we refer to Psalms 23, especially uh, verse 4 to 5, this normal, I don't know, when I'm going through hard times, this really comes through for me. And whenever I think about it, like everything else ceases to exist. Even though through I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and staff, they comfort me. The question is not if. The question is when. Because it is bound to come. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. And so there will be those people, of course, who do not believe. And just to touch slightly on the lukewarm category kind of people. Because I think they are even the one that can really mess you up. They have known the word, some of them, most of the time. They can quote scriptures. But when it comes to applying and especially those hard times, I think these, these are the people who will commonly resonate with the statement that God helps those who help themselves. And imagine that time you're going through a hard situation and that is the kind of friend you have. Like you know for sure, they know scripture, you have been in church to them, but they're the ones, instead of encouraging you, they're like, Sasa, we need to leave God out of this. I have heard some of them say. So you're wondering, God is to be considered in this area and not the other. So this would best be described by Second Timothy chapter three, verse one to seven, but we'll read selectively. Let's read verse five. It tells us about some of the things that people will be doing in the last days. Lovers of money, lovers of themselves. You can read when you have time. So such people will have a form of godliness, but denying its power, they have, not, have nothing to do with them. Give me verse seven. They're always learning, but never been able to acknowledge the truth. Are you such kind of a person? That you know, you know for sure, you're always learning these things. But you're always on the edge. Like, I will go with that. If this other side is going to be okay, I will go with that. And so for them, faith is circumstantial. It is not absolute. Verse 9, but they will not get very far, the Bible tells us. Because as in the case of those men, by those men it refers to themselves, like what they think of them, themselves. Their folly will be clear to everyone. Actually, sometimes they know. They know for sure that that is not the way they should be going. But because the deal looks too good, then they will go by that option for that particular point in time. But do not forget verse 9. They will not go very far because their folly will be clear to everyone as it is to them. 
So sometimes we think, you know the way we normally say, you cannot lie to God, Satan, and yourself. So, yes, you know, you know for sure that you know it, but you're not following it. And uh, according to them, they can manipulate situations. Just to tell you one more, as I almost wind up, one more testimony. I, I was looking for a business premise, which, which for somebody in business knows it's quite hard. And um, I realized there's someone who was having a similar kind of business where I was looking for a premise. But they have hired a, an extra house opposite theirs because they anticipate that somebody might start a similar business in that place. And you know what they do? They pay the rent even when they are not using that house. And so I... It was very interesting to me because I'm thinking, see, you take that money, pay school fees for someone, because you think you're so wise in your own eyes. That's Proverbs chapter 3 verse... Verse 5. Verse. Yes, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Go on, verse 6. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Verse 7. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. And only for me to learn because it's actually not long ago. Almost a week after that, I am being told they actually passed on. And I was thinking, all that they were trying to protect and putting their treasures here on earth, it does not go with them to heaven. And so what should be our greatest takeaways even as we go through adversity? The Lord tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 that he has made everything beautiful in its own time. Yet he set, he set eternity in the human heart so that we are not able, able to understand what he has done from beginning to the end. So during that time, unfortunately, you have no way of knowing what happens yet at the end. Yours it is to absolutely have trust and hope in him. Not because you can see it. As we've said, faith is the substance of things not seen. I've already told you about 2 Corinthians. Whatever. 2 Corinthians 1, 8 to 10. We felt sure that we were going to die, but this made us stop trusting in ourselves and start trusting God. I pray that that will be your mantra going on. That you absolutely trust in him. So, what are some of the parting shots? I will address us differently. To those that dare to be in the hot category, and I am praying, it is my earnest prayer that you will be considered by that scripture of Revelation 3, 15 to 16 in the hot category. What I want to encourage us is always remember the situations that these people went through as we read through the scripture. Think about Daniel as he was being told also, stop praying to that God and he continues praying as if nothing had been said by the king because he knew his God. And when he's thrown into that den of lions, God is faithful enough that he shuts the mouths of those lions and he comes out in the same way that he was. Down there, as you continue reading, you'll normally see that uh, King Darius himself even now actually writes and ascribes to this God. If you read verse um, it's in the book of Daniel chapter 6 towards the end I think about verse 27 24 to 27 there 
So you will see how he even now instructs the people that they must believe in the God of Daniel. And because we have been given the great commission, Matthew 28 verse 19, Acts chapter 8 verse 1, that is our role. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, sorry. That people around you will see the faith with which you treated situations and they will have no option but to trust in him. Remember also, it is not always that easy. You must always combine it with Matthew 6.33. That you have to seek his, first and kingdom, his kingdom and righteousness first. Then all these other things he's going to add unto you. And so I want to encourage us. Yes, it may not look like you can see it. But it is there for sure. Going by the word. To the cold and lukewarm, I am not sure if to separate. <laughs> because most of the time, their results are the same. I think it's tragedy enough not to be born again, but I think it is a worse tragedy for you not to be born again, but you're not living in the victory that you should be living in. And the difference, you've already talked about it. Allow yourself to be taught by the word of God, to be rebuked. Do not trust in your own understanding. Trust absolutely in God. And so I pray that to this category, Acts chapter 9 will be your portion. Where we see the encounter of Paul as he's being converted to Saul. That he was going to Damascus to do an absolutely different thing. But God right there gets hold of him. And he changes the mission. And since his, mess, his ministry is quite dramatic because he immediately picks up sharing the word of God in everywhere he went. And you will see how effective he was in his ministry because he also suffered a lot for Christ and he did not even be in a state of lukewarm anymore as much as he would have been considered as in the cold kind of category of people. And as I conclude, to those who are still in there, cold kind of people I don't know I think you you are still an orphan going by John chapter 1 verse 12 but to those that actually believed and received him he gave them the right to become his children and so you're still out there you're not sure you would want to consider you would want to consider actually joining this other side and do not be lukewarm. I pray like Paul that he will take you from cold to hot so that you do not waste time in the wrong category. Just give me James chapter 1 verse 18 as I finish. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might become a kind, we, we might be a kind of fast fruits all he created fast fruits he gave us birth through the word of truth that we might be, be a kind of fast fruits all he, of all he created he has created many people there are those that choose not to believe there are those that believe halfway We've talked about the lukewarm. But if you have to be in the first fruits kind of category, you need to absolutely believe. And I pray that for all of us, because I believe this addressed all of us, that the Lord will give us no peace until we are found where he has called us to be. Amen. Thank you.